today's video, I am so excited to share with all of you three delicious, cozy, and extremely nourishing fall soup recipes. Hi there, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Jessica, and here on my channel, we focus on all things mom life. However, everything we do in my space does have a bit of a healthy twist as I'm a holistic nutritionist and a nutritional practitioner. Last week I shared with all of you some healthy, delicious fall baked goods and that video was a complete hit. If you haven't had a chance to check out that video, I will link it for you up here in the cards. Give that a watch after you're done with today's. So continuing with that momentum into the fall season, I wanted to share with you three delicious fall soup recipes because I'm not sure about you guys, but in my home, we love to make soups all year long, but especially in the fall. It is a beautiful sunny day here in Michigan. However, it has been extremely cold for September over the past week to week and a half. So I've really been recipe testing and trying out some tried and true favorites, giving them all of a fall twist. So I am so excited and thrilled to be sharing these soup recipes with you guys today. So the first soup that we're gonna be making today is a spicy chicken andalou cabbage soup. This one is delicious and a fan favorite. The reason I love this one is not only is it of course nutrient dense, but it's actually extremely hearty and light at the exact same time. So we are actually using the spicy Andalou chicken sausages from Amy Lou that were featured in my Costco haul two weeks ago. If you missed that video, I will also link that for you here in the cards to give a watch. So we will be using Andalou chicken sausages. You can get the Amy Lou brand from Costco or anywhere else that sells Andalou chicken sausages. The reason I like the Andalou is it does add a bit of spice. You could also just use, I know from Whole Foods they do have in the butcher section spicy chicken sausages or spicy turkey those would also work or if your kids or your family is sensitive to spice you could use Italian chicken or Italian turkey sausages as well but that's what I'm gonna be using and of course for all of the recipes that I'm sharing in today's video be sure to check out the description box down below as I will have all of the recipe details down below for you so that you can recreate these soups at home in your own kitchens Okay, so our first soup that we're gonna be making is this delicious purple cabbage andalou chicken soup, as I was saying in the intro. So I know this is not very appetizing to look at over here, but I do have four of the Amy Lou andalou chicken sausages shredded. So I just put these in my small food processor. I will put here on the screen a little bit of B-roll of this food processor. I shared it last week in my baking video and you guys loved it. And that little food processor shredded this chicken. So I only used four of them instead of eight because I am making a smaller batch of this soup. So I'm saving the other four for a different recipe that I'll be filming later this week. Then I do have one medium sized yellow onion that I've chopped up. I have two carrots chopped. I have three celery ribs chopped over here. And then I have one small purple cabbage chopped in the back. You could also definitely use green cabbage in this recipe, but my preference is purple. I love purple cabbage for all of the nutritional value. It's a wonderful source of antioxidants and vitamin C. So moving into the cooler months, I'm always looking to increase that in my family. Then in the back here, I do have two cans of organic diced tomatoes. These ones are from Whole Foods, and I do really like these ones because they do have basil, garlic, and oregano. So I have two of those, along with one can of organic navy bean that I just need to rinse and drain, and then we'll add this into the pot as well. Then I do have one carton of organic vegetable broth. This one's from Kettle and Fire. It is delicious. We love this one, so I'm gonna be using this. I've also made this recipe with chicken bone broth as well. I like both. I just happen to have this one on hand today, so they're most definitely interchangeable. So we're gonna get started just by turning on the stove and heating up our pan with a little bit of avocado oil. You could definitely use olive oil as well if you're gonna be cooking it at a lower temperature. Once your pan is hot, then you're gonna to want to go ahead and add in your chopped garlic. You can see I put my chopped garlic in the food processor after I done the carrots, so there's a little bit of orange in here. along with your medium yellow onion. Oh, 
Okay, once this is softened and it's very fragrant, that's when you're gonna wanna add in your Andalou chicken sausage. Okay, once you've browned the meat, that's when you're gonna go ahead and add in the rest of the veggies. We've got our celery. Carrots. Of course, the purple cabbage. We'll go ahead and stir everything together. And then add in our beans. Everything has softened and combined. So now we're gonna go ahead and put in our diced tomatoes and our veggie stock. Now we'll go ahead and just cover this up and I'm gonna let it simmer for about 25 to 35 minutes. Because we did soften all of our veggies and we browned the Andalou chicken, it shouldn't take too long, but you do want all of the flavors to combine together. So I'm gonna cover it and set a timer for 25 minutes. Okay, so I know I've shared this one before, but if I'm doing a fall soup or stew video, I have to include our absolute favorite pot roast. So here I have five, just over five pounds of grass-fed chuck roast. Then I also have some grass-fed butter. And I have my favorite kitchen appliance of 2021, and that is this Instant Pot Aura Pro. So it is their slow cooker and I am obsessed. I'm gonna go ahead and saute and sear the meat right in here once it's nice and golden brown. I will go ahead and add in some potatoes, mushrooms, celery, and carrots with some beef broth and we will cook it overnight. It'll be ready to go for tomorrow. So easy, so simple, and extremely delicious. Okay, while the meat sautés, I'm gonna go ahead and peel and chop our potatoes, throw them in a large bowl, as well as our celery, mushrooms, and carrots. All of it will just go into one bowl. Once the meat is browned, I will just pour this on top. We'll add our beef broth and our seasoning, and it's truly that simple. Definitely a time saver. I chopped up our potatoes. I'm gonna chop up the celery and carrots, but I did buy pre-chopped organic baby bell mushrooms. I'm gonna wash these up really quickly and then they'll be ready to throw in with the potatoes and the rest of the veg. So 
I'm using pre-washed baby carrots. You could throw them in whole, just like this, and they will cook up beautifully. I am going to be chopping them in like half or quarters, just to make it a little bit easier for the kids, but my kids do like them whole, but you could keep them just like this and keep it super simple. I do go with using baby carrots for this, again, just because it makes it easier. And you could use full carrots that you have to peel and chop, and that would be perfectly fine as well. So I'm just gonna quickly rough chop these, throw them in the bowl with the potatoes. By that time, our mushrooms will have finished draining, and then we'll just need to throw in our celery. Okay, so we've got our bowl full of veggies, sans the mushrooms, they're just finishing drying. I'm gonna go ahead and throw these into the slow cooker and let them soften for just a little bit on the saute function before I add in the rest of our spices and our beef broth. Okay, our veggies are in. You saw all of the vegetables I added in. I will have the exact measurements in the description box down below. And I still have an abundant amount of space for our two cartons of organic beef broth. I hadn't had a chance to make it over to Trader Joe's. I do like to use their organic beef broth bone broth, but unfortunately, I'd only had a chance to make it over to Whole Foods today, but these will definitely do. It won't change the taste by any means, but adding in the beef bone broth from Trader Joe's or anywhere else, whether it be Kettle and Fire um, or whatever bone broth of your liking does, of course, just up the nutritional value. But these ones from Pacific Foods will work great. We'll go ahead and finish putting in all of our seasoning and add in the broth. As you can probably tell by the lighting, I'm filming this pretty late at night. It's like nine o'clock right now. So I'm going to be cooking this on the slow cook function because this will be our dinner for tomorrow night. So I'm probably gonna cook it for 10, 12 hours. Actually, we're gonna cook it on low for 12 hours and it will just fall apart at that point. And honestly, now that I have both cartons of broth in here, I went ahead and poured in some full-size carrots and I may add three more stalks of celery. I'm always surprised by this slow cooker and how much it holds. It's the best slow cooker I've ever owned in my entire life. So let's go ahead and as you can see here on the screen, you can do a ton of different things. You can make rice in here. You can make different grains like quinoa, yogurt, roast. You can do stew, steam, bake, sear, saute like we just did. But we are gonna be doing the slow cook option. And we'll turn it to 12 hours. Voila, just like that. And you'll know it has started because on the screen you can see the little icon that's popped up and it makes all of the sounds that you expect from an instant pot i feel like i have so many appliances of theirs at this point i have the slow cooker the original instant pot the instant pot blender which you see me use all of the time and we have the air fryer so they're definitely tried and true appliances and I can already smell everything coming together just by sauteing the beef with the veggies beforehand. It's already smelling beautifully. Hi guys, okay, for today we are gonna be making a delicious potato leek soup. And as I'm talking to you, I realize I just turned on the dishwasher. So please ignore the background audio. But this recipe is so delicious and of course, easy to pull together. There's not a ton of ingredients and it's very stress-free because you get to rough chop everything, throw it in the pan because we are going to be using an immersion blender. So it doesn't have to be pretty and perfect because we will be blending everything together at the end. 
So we're gonna get started by chopping up some potato, garlics, and leeks, the base of our soup. And I'm gonna get out my pot here in a second. We're gonna put all of that in our pot and we're gonna brown all of that before we throw in the rest of the ingredients. Okay, now we're gonna just chop up the garlic, add that into the pan with a little bit of olive oil and our leeks. So when I have my clients make this recipe, I tell them four cloves of garlic. Here, I have seven. I will say that only four of them are large, three are pretty small. We love garlic, I love extra garlic, so. I have the garlic and leeks going behind me. And now, we are gonna chop up one and a half cups of cauliflower. Now that the leeks and garlic have had a chance to brown and soften, I'm gonna go ahead and add in the cauliflower for around five to eight minutes to allow that also to absorb the delicious flavor. Then we will add in the potatoes. secret ingredients that you definitely don't want to miss when you bring the soup together. One is the juice of an entire lemon. Next is some white pepper and organic Dijon mustard. So we're gonna put all of these in to really bring out the flavor, make it nice and bold, and also just like a hint of tanginess because of the starch in the recipe. adding in our broth. Oftentimes I use veggie broth, sometimes I use chicken broth. Today we are going to be using the Kettle and Fire chicken broth. This is their bone broth. I prefer chicken broth in the recipe over veggie broth, but they are both equally delicious. I just think it has a little bit more of a bold taste. At this point, we're gonna cover up our pot. We're gonna keep it at medium to low and we're gonna simmer it for 30 minutes before we take it off the heat and use the immersion blender. Okay, so I've been simmering the soup for 45 minutes actually. I've just turned off the heat. As you can see, everything is definitely softened. Now I'm gonna take my immersion blender and I'm gonna go ahead and blend everything together. I wanna thank you all so much for watching and if you liked this video, you can let me know by giving it a big thumbs up and then be sure to let me know in the comment section down below which soup you're most excited to try. And now the subscribe button is right over here on the screen. Give that a click, that way you don't miss a single video and I hope to see you back here next Thursday.